Okay guys, welcome back to Engineers Academy. Now I'm going to solve this example related to moment of inertia. Since you people have asked many times that solve problems related to moment of inertia. So this is the first example from chapter 10 related to the moment of inertia. And this example says that determine the moment of inertia for the rectangular area shown in figure 10.5 with respect to the centroidal x dash axis. Then in the second part the problem says that the axis xb passing through the base of the rectangle then we have to find the moment of inertia about the axis xb and then in part c we are required to find the pole or z axis so we have to find the polar moment of inertia in part c uh, perpendicular to the x dash and y dash plane and passing through the centroid c now to find the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis we know that i x dash this will be equal to the location of the differential element from the centroidal axis. So, the, the, uh, this is the differential element and this differential element is located at a distance of y dash from x dash axis. So, this will be y dash square times dA and this, this, dif this is that differential area dA. So, from this we can write that dA will be equal to this length. So, this length is b, b divided by 2 plus b divided by 2. So, this is b into the height which is dy dash. So, we can write that this is b dy dash. So, now we can write that i x dash this is equal to y dash square and dA is b dy dash. Uh, we can write this b outside of the integration since this is constant and this y dash uh, is from minus h divided by 2 to h divided by 2. We have to integrate this from minus h divided by 2 to h divided by 2 since the centroid is located at a distance of h divided by 2 from this end, right? So, here the y dash value is minus h divided by 2 and here y dash value is plus h divided by 2. So, we have to integrate this from minus h divided by 2 to plus h divided by 2. So, now when I, when I integrate this, so this is b and this will be y dash to the power 3 divided by 3 and this is from minus h divided by 2 to plus h divided by 2. So, now if we put these limits, so this will be b divided by 3 and that will be plus h divided by 2 to the power 3 minus minus h divided by 2 to the power 3 and this will be b divided by 3 and this will be we can write this as h to the power 3 and 2 to the power 3 is 8 and this is minus and this will give us minus h to the power 3 uh, minus to the power 3 is minus again so this is minus h to the power 3 divided by 8 and if we multiply this minus with minus so that will become plus so we are left with plus h divided by 3 divided by 8 and if we add both of these so that will be 2 2h to the power 3 divided by 8. So, if we multiply this, so we can cancel out this 8. So, this is 2, 2 and this is 4. So, we will be left with the i x dash, the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis will be b h to the power 3 divided by 12. So, this is very known formula for finding the moment of inertia of a rectangle. So, B is the width and H is the height, right? So, this is the moment of inertia of this rectangle about the centroidal axis is X dash. Now, in part B, we were asked to find the moment of inertia for the rectangle about the axis XB passing through the base of the rectangle. So, this is that XB angle. So, now for that, we need to apply the parallel axis theorem. So, we can write that the moment of inertia about the axis Xb will be equal to the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis plus location of the Xb axis. This is the Xb is the axis which is parallel to X dash. So, this parallel axis is at a distance of h divided by 2 from the centroidal axis. So, this is the location of this Xb axis from that X dash axis. So, let us say this is y and this is equal to h divided by 2. So, according to parallel axis theorem, the moment of inertia about this axis which is parallel to the centroidal axis will be equal to the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis plus 
uh, y square times the area and what is y square y square is the distance between the two parallel axes so the distance between these two parallel axes is h divided by 2 so we can write this as we know i x dash we have just determined this this is b b h to the power 3 divided by 12 plus y square so here y square y is h divided by 2 so we can write that this is h divided by 2 to the power 2 and area so now we know this whole area area is b into h so i will multiply this with b into h so now we can find the moment of inertia about that axis which is passing through the edge of this rectangle so that is x b this is b h cube divided by 12 plus and this will become h to the power 3 divided by 8 uh, this is, sorry this is square so this is h square h square divided by 4 b into h or we can write that this is h cube b h cube divided by 4 if we multiply it with that b h so now if we add up both of these so this will be we can take this b h cube outside common so this is b h cube this will be 1 divided by 12 plus 1 divided by 4 and we can write this as b h cube and if we take the lcm so this is 1 and this is 3 so this is 4 4 divided by 12 and this will be 1 divided by 3 so 12 divided by 4 is 3 so this is we can write that this is 1 divided by 3 b h cube so this is the moment of inertia about that axis which is passing through the edge of this rectangle or through the base of this rectangle similarly in part c we are we are asked to find the moment of inertia about the pole or the z dash axis so the z dash axis is out of the screen at this centroid right we can write that the i z dash this will be equal to i x dash this is the summation of the uh, moment of inertia about the centroidal axis so this is i x dash and i y dash so now we can find i y dash as well using this same formula right so the moment of inertia about x dash is b h cube divided by 12 so b is the base and h is the height so now about y dash we can write that uh, for y dash the base will be this and the height will be this right for x dash this is the base parallel the edge which is parallel to the x dash axis is the base so for y dash this will be the base this edge is the parallel to the y dash and that is h so we can write that that is h and the, this is the height now so this is b cube divided by 12 right so for x dash the base is b and for y dash the base is this height right this h so this is h b cube divided by 12 using this we can find i y dash so now we can find the polar moment of inertia i z dash so that will be i x dash which is b h to the power 3 divided by 12 plus uh, h b to the power 3 divided by 12 to find i y dash we can use the same integral we can use the integral and we can find this by using the same method we can write that i y dash will be equal to the integral of x dash square times dA so that this will give us the same formula right but for evaluating this integral we have to define the differential area parallel to the y dash axis is like this so that will give us this i y dash but we can use this formula to find this i y dash so the, uh, this will give us the polar moment of inertia about the z dash axis now if I take b h common divided by 12 so this will be uh, h square plus b square so this is the moment of inertia about the z dash axis and this is also known as polar moment of inertia and this is the summation of the moment of inertia about the x and y axis or the x dash and y dash axis both the centroidal axis so this is the uh, introduction to the uh, moment of inertia how to find the moment of inertia uh, of a rectangle and we will apply this concept to the further uh, problems that we will encounter in this chapter so i hope this will help you in your learning uh, do hit the subscribe button and 
like this video if you people want me to continue this effort of solving hebelostatic problems.